Hey everybody, it's your man Tyke coming to you with another true spook story. Now before I begin, I'm going to ask that you hit your like button, subscribe to the channel, and share me with your friends and family. Go ahead and share me now. I'm more than worth it. Now the way I'm going to do this, the first half of the story is going to be played out on, on this channel, this YouTube channel. But since I started my podcast, I'm going to have the remaining of the story uploaded there. So if you guys want to see it, the link to the podcast will be in the description box. But rather you go to the podcast or not to finish it, I guarantee it's going to blow your mind. So without further ado, let's begin. So this was the day round by, it was uh, 1996, 1996, 97. I had just had my, no, it was 1997. I had just had my first kid. I'm 18, 19 years old, just had my first kid. And I'm, you know, I, you know, brother sitting up there trying to make some money. So I had stopped the little, little minor hustling, selling dope and shit like that. So I said, let me go ahead and, let me go ahead and get a little job. So I began working at Red's Market, Red's Market off of uh, Sand Lake Road. Uh, a little fruit stand, little fruit store, little fruit stand where you pack fruit to be sent to seven to the Seven Elevens and shit. So I began working at Red Market as a you know as a fruit picker selector and shit. So I was making good money. I was making like thirteen dollars an hour back in the day. That shit was good money. So I'm like, yeah, I'm doing pretty good. So having my first kid, me and my homeboy and them, you know, we, we both had a job at the same place. Well, his cousin came down here from uh, Los Angeles, L.A. And when his cousin came down here from L.A., you know, his cousin was pretty hardcore. We thought he was the coolest motherfucker. You know, we had been watching N.W.A., Straight Outta Compton, Easy e Dr. Dre. We we thought, like, got MCA, AWACS. We, you know, we thought we had a whole... Gangsta God next to us, cause we just man, we just had a little bullshit ass gang neighborhood gang, but this was a real deal, you know, blood, real deal. He done saw battles, gunshot, war wound, walk with a cane, all that shit. So we were like, yeah, yeah. So anything that cat wanted, you know, we we hustled and got him. Oh man, I, I need me some beer, bitch. I, and he was a bomb ass nigga, man, laying around on the corner, fucking hoes. You know, he ain't even have an apartment, no house. He was at the bus stop or, uh, you know, who, which hole he could lay with that day, that week, you know. But, you know, when he came to the basketball court and late man Gordon to hang out with us and shit, we was, we was pretty ecstatic because, shit, he was hard and he was in our neighborhood. So, fuck when late man Holmes tried us. Fuck when Mercer Drive tried us. Fuck when, you know, Apaka tried us. We had a real L.A. gangster. Let that sink in. So, so I had so me and my homeboy had got a job. His cousin come down from Los Angeles. They chilling. They doing their thing. So you know, times get hard. So he he yelling. The working man is a sucker. The working man is a sucker. Man, fuck a job, dog. You gotta get it how you get it. The world don't love nobody. Woo woo. He all on that. I'm a rebel without a without a cause. I ain't got no home. He was all in that spin that propaganda to us. So we were eating this shit up, man. You know, we were eating it up. Tupac came on the scene, and we we ain't nothing but a gangster party. Snoop Dogg, I mean, we was in our gangster brain at 17, 18 years old, people. Hey, that's what it is, bitch. I thought I was Ice Cube and Tupac put together. So, as we work and doing our thing, this guy had a knack for crying. And he the one that really introduced me during that time in the robbing people. You know, I had been in, I, I, I used to steal a car with my uncle and them, crash into a, 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 a pawn shop, you know, crash the car, back up, you know, let the people run in there and get a hole, probably crawl in the hole, open the door and shit like that. You know, I used to do shit like that, but I ain't never at that time put a gun to a bitch head and robbed them. So now I'm on that level because he done crunk us up, got up hype, and he know what he doing because shit, he a big L.A. gangster. Y'all y'all feeling me? So as I'm working hard, get the little paycheck, 
me and my baby mama all getting bitching, baby need diapers, newborn. I'm like, shit, man, this shit, this working shit for the birds, this shit is real. So now I'm out there trying to drink beer with him and smoke pot with him and shit. I'm trying to do everything to stay cool and relevant on the street. And he said, hey, man, I've been casing out this house from the chick I've been fucking. You know, I've been fucking the chick two houses down from, down from this house I want to knock off. And I'm like... I say, man, well, he say, oh, man, that shit ain't nothing. He say, right there in College Park, right up the road, say, we could just go deal two cars. He say, the first car, we're going to park over there at the uh, gas station, at the 7-Eleven gas station. He say, the second car, we're going to take for a ride. It's going to be the same car. So I'm telling y'all how, how, how the shit go down. So we steal two of the same cars. There was a white Dodge Spirit. I don't know, I know this is a spooky story, but that's just a coincidence, a Dodge Spirit. So it was a white, it was two white Dodge Spirit. We, bought, we got the same car from different neighborhoods. We parked both of the cars in front of the 7-Eleven on College Park. So we drive down the street. So all of us rushing the house, mass on, boom, boom, boom. He coming out with the gun. The chick done, the chick done did some babysitting for the people. She opened the back door, let us in. People in there watching. Fred Sanford or some Archie Bunker, I don't know, man. I was I was just taken by the, the niceness of the house and shit. So he go up there and he like, give me all your shit, nigga, give me all your shit. So we standing by the door, my silly ass up there with a pillowcase in my motherfucking hand. So as they walking around, they dropping all the shit to me and him and his cousin, they had the shit down cause they had done this shit before, right? So they just dropping everything in the pillowcase. My dumb ass just holding one pillowcase then when that get filled up, you know, run upstairs to the people's house, get the jewelry box, get all the shit, the, the toiletry. Man, why are you taking lotion for? It's it just stupid shit. Regular spoons and forks, it wasn't no silver. I mean, it's just dumb shit, man. And now that I'm older, I can see that the nigga didn't know what he was doing. He just was trying something. One of the people how took steaks and beer and shit out the man's refrigerator. So... I'm holding, so now I'm running out the door with two pillowcases, and I put the shit in the car. So he like, y'all stand there and don't move. So he run out the door, jump in the car. We flushing it. We flushing it. I'm like, God damn. Nigga, we got away with it. We got away with it. Wasn't no gunshots fired. Wasn't no dumb shit. Nothing happened. So I'm like, oh, shit, the nigga know what he doing. Got back to split up the shit, man. We splitting up food, steaks frozen hamburger meat. He kept all the jewelry and the little money he got from the people. And he like, man, y'all could take this VCR. Y'all could take this DVD player. Y'all could take... He giving us little bullshit, little Walkman and headphones. So, you know, I'm like, well, nigga, this ain't, this ain't even worth my time. You know, I said, my uncle done find out I robbed for this shit right here. Bitch, I'm finna get beat up. And he like, man, fuck that shit, nigga. The next one gonna be great. So, he the next one. So, now nah, we doing the same thing. So I done went on by three runs with it. Nobody got hurt, people. Nobody got hurt. So I want to put that in uh, Eric because it was always he would end up screwing one of these chicks that was babysitting for the rich cat, the rich cats and shit like that. And then, you know, he'll convince them to let the back door open, some shit like that. And one no security cameras really around that bit. They were too expensive for the average man. After, you know, after I think I think on our third, fourth one. You know, I scored some money. He split it up. You know, I made like $500 off of that. You know, him and his cousin split the other little, little, little five, well, I mean, the other little thousand dollars because it was three, four ways. I know I got 500 and whatever they got, they got. So it was a good night. So I'm going home, telling my baby mama, look, 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 got that, that, that. You know, I done gave it to her, told her to go get her toes done, hair done. You know, nigga, I'm a proud papa. Went and bought my little kids some. Jordan shoes and shit, the little baby shoes, newborn baby Jordan, I'm ugly as fuck. So I'm a proud father, right? Wrong. So now we hanging out. So he like, dog, this Saturday we gonna do it again. I say, well, I can't fuck with you this Saturday, man. You know, I say, I can't fuck with you this Saturday. I got something to do. I ain't really have nothing to do. I just got tired of hanging with him because I'm taking penitentiary chances and ain't only the real money I got after about four or five robbers is $500. So what the fuck I got to do with this damn shit? Man? I can get out there and sell some cane. I'm trying to be a good baby daddy. I'm trying to be a good father figure, you know? So, okay. Push comes to show. So he like, man, fuck you. You a pussy ass nigga anyway. 
you look you look pussy ass nigga, you coward. So you know, I got a problem with people with people selling me out, saying bad shit, talking to me any kind of way. I always been like that, you know. I'm kind of respectful on that level. But if you're gonna constantly, and I'll let you say about one or two things, you know, but just don't overkill it. So he was doing the whole overkill thing. He was an old pussy ass nigga, fuck ass nigga. Bitch, he was just saying all them type of shits to me. And and my homeboy, he was like, egging him on. He was like, yeah, yeah, tight. Yo, sorry ass nigga, you gas, you gas. That's the thing we like, because like, instead of saying you a fart, we like, you gas, nigga, you go away in the wind quick. The wind come, you fly, you fold. He was saying all that shit. So out of nowhere, I picked up a Budweiser bottle off the ground and I swung on, I swung on the LA cat, the real original gangster nigga, right? I swung on him like, oh hell no, fuck nigga, you ain't gonna be talking to me like that. So I swung on him, bam. So when I swung on him, the bottle broke across his face, but it didn't like shatter, it just like cracked the bottle, cause bottles were made good back in the day, fuck it. And he was like, pussy nigga, you know what you did? I'll kill your ass nigga, I'm, I'm, I'm some pyro yama yama yama. I mean, I bet you the fuck you think you talking to. So now nah, I done reached down in my pants and I done pulled out my little 38. And I'm like, bitch, I thump your pussy ass right here, nigga. I don't know the fuck you think you talking to. So everybody like, hey, yeah, that dude that he got a problem with. Like, man, we just were talking. That's just how niggas talk in L.A. That's how I say, man, fuck that shit, dog. I say, I understand where you're going with it. I say, but you can't talk to me like that too much. I say, I'm a real nigga, man. And he like, man, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. You stupid. Get out of here. So unbeknownst to me, I done damaged the dude I socket. I ain't know people, I ain't know. I just swung on him. And I guess he was I guess when I had the 38 on him, he wouldn't pull his shit. So we just went away. We just separated. So I'm back at the house. I'm chilling. I'm I'm doing this. So whatever they did that Saturday night, I don't know. They probably went and robbed. I don't fucking know. So now fast forward a little bit. It's been about seven, eight months. Him and his cousin going around robbing like a motherfucker, man. They robbing people on the drive. They robbing people in the in College Park. They robbing people in the popka. They, and now they done got a gang of these cats robbing people in the popka. So when the robberies hit the news and shit, I knew who it was, but I ain't gonna snitch because didn't nobody get shot. Didn't nobody get hurt. I mean, they did it clean. Now, where they fucked up at people, and this is a real deal, where they fucked up at, they went and robbed Miss Emma on Five Lane Road. They came down and they never want to grab my friend. So they went up there and they rock, they say, okay, let's go rob these motherfuckers on, on Emma because Miss Emma had a gay grandson. And I guess, you know, the gay grandson had started making friends with one of the chicks he was, he was knocking down the LA Kings, the cat was knocking down. So he done convinced her to go and lock the door. And as you know, Miss Emma was one of grandma, you know, which friend. So in Miss Emma House, she loved Tupac Shakur. She loved Tupac, boy. She loved Tupac. She had. She used to say Tupac was the finest thing ever. If that, if I was a little younger, who that Tupac? She, you, you know, you hear the old lady talk about her. So she had a big giant picture of Tupac in her living room. Y'all keep this shit in mind. Had a big giant picture of Tupac in her living room. So the dude, they go in there. And they do a home invasion. They go in there, they rob Miss Emma house. They lay down her gay grandson on the ground. Boom, they lay down all the other people, Vernon, all them. They lay them down. They got the pistol to their head and shit like this. So they start, you know, ramaging shit, robbing. I'm right up the road and late man going. So I don't know what's going on, but eventually I'm going to find out. The robbery's ain't done. So I'm sitting up there and all that stuff, and I done been in Miss Eminem house several times with Grandma, so I know that particular Tupac picture, people. So on the way out, he ends up pulling the trigger. Bow! He shoot Miss Emma Gay grandson in the shoulder. Grandson blood hit the Tupac picture. Now, when the blood hit the Tupac picture, they like, man, don't leave no evidence behind. So he went and he grabbed the Tupac picture off the wall and he took the Tupac picture with him. Now here we go now, this is the fuck shit. So as he taking the Tupac picture with him, you know, you can still see the little print when we went in now. You know, Miss Emma grandson on the, on the ground bleeding and shit. Nobody know who did it. The chick that, you know, that was friends with me Emma, they, she acted dumb. I knew the whole score what was going on. 
So I go to grandma and I said, Grandma, I think I know who did this robbery. And she's like, who, who? I say, I say, I think it was that LA cat, man, you know, that'd be hanging out, you know, with my homeboy. I ain't saying no names because this is this shit gets serious, people. I say the LA cat that be hanging out with my homeboy. She say, huh? That dope head? I say, yes, ma'am. She say, wait till I tell my son. I'm gonna make my son get his motherfucking ass. Cause you know, my uncle and them and, and brother and them, these, these bitches. Listen, these bitches serious for it. I don't trust my family, so I just put it like that. That's how gangster they is on the street. Grandma went and told Aunt Nell, and Aunt Nell say, okay, we'll find and we'll see what's going on. But in turn, Aunt wanted to go robbing for the shit he had been robbing for. Aunt wasn't going to do nothing because it's a street code. Aunt just wanted to go and, you know, slap him around, take the shit that he done robbed. And then Aunt say, if he got the Tupac picture, we're going to take the Tupac picture and return it back to Miss Emma. You know, so that'll be like, okay, we handle the situation. All right. So I told them where they be hanging out. This time they living with a chick over there in Lake Man Garden. They had all the shit in one room in the kid in the, in the girl's kids' room. You know, sometimes sometimes they get old women ain't shit at time. Aunt go over there, knock on the door, kick the door in, put the gun to the cat face on with Aunt, and I'm looking at him. I'm like, dog, that was Miss Emma y'all fuck with. Now that's grandma. That's like a godmama to me. Oh, we didn't know. We didn't know. I say, ain't no pussy nigga shit. Ain't no fuck nigga shit. Ain't all that. No, no, man, we didn't know y'all take this shit back. Y'all take this shit back. We sorry, we sorry, the L.A. nigga fouling down. So then my uncle say, why you shoot the little gay boy? The little gay boy don't fuck with nobody. The little gay boy happy as fuck. Let the little boy be gay. Nigga, you got something against gay? So we, now they making a joke about it. He didn't really care. He just making a joke about it. I ain't know he was gay. I ain't know he was gay. I just shot him. I just shot him, man. Just just cause to prove a point. I ain't know the bullet was going Hit him, I tried to make it get in the arm like that. So Aunt was like, well, bitch, the nigga in the hospital about to lose his arm. I'm like, fuck you, and you gonna call the cops? You gonna call the cops? I'm like, nah, bitch, I ain't calling the police. We finna fuck you up. So my brother and I went in there and they beat the L.A. cat up. Beat him up real bad. Beat him up real bad. Nah, the Tupac picture was sitting right there, like, but on the ground behind him, and they brought him in the living room with the Tupac picture because they were finna take it home. So they whooping the nigga ass, bum, 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 bum. I'm standing up there at the door because I had, they had made me hold all three of their pistols, you know, because they didn't want to accidentally shoot the nigga, get in a rage when they whooping his ass. So I'm sitting out there holding all three of their pistols, two in my pocket, mine in my hand, and shit, and they beating him. So now his blood just splattering on the Tupac picture. My homeboy blood splattering on the Tupac picture. All this blood splattering on the Tupac picture. Crazy, right? Crazy. So now, my uncle and them now went in there and robbed him, took all his dope, took all his money, took all the shit back that he took from his M and M house, plus they took some extra shit for them, you know, for the hard time and the trouble. So now I'm on the outs with this LA cat and his cousin, so we ain't friends no more. They take the two part picture back down at Miss M and M house. And they say, well, we got him, here it go. Grandma said, y'all beat his ass? Yeah, yeah, mama, we whooped his ass. Tight, you, did they whoop his ass or did they just fuck off? I said, grandma. I say they whooped that nigga ass, grandma. I say that boy ain't got the teeth. He probably ain't got no brain left. Good for the bitch. Fucking around with Emma. And she say, fucking around with my girlfriend. You know, that back in the day, old people call, call they, girl, they friends girlfriends and friend girls and shit like that. So, Miss Emma get her picture back. She goes to wiping the blood off of Tupac, off the Tupac picture. She loving that Tupac picture. She put the bitch back on the wall. Now, every night, that, that picture of Tupac, she used to always stare at it. She didn't like it no more. She just said she still loved Tupac, but she didn't like the picture no more. She said the picture reminded her of her grandson getting shot, and she could only see the blood splatter across the picture of Tupac's face and shit like that. So she just kept on saying, I don't want that picture no more. I don't want that picture no more. And she was like, I got you. I got you. Tell your grandson he can have it. And I do. I like Tupac. I said, okay, I'll take the picture. You know, just take it off her hand. So I replaced it. Different picture of Tupac, a smaller one, you know, but still the same, the same one. We got his hand behind his back, pleading the fifth and all that shit. Got the picture. So grandma said, you got that picture? I said, yes, ma'am. I said, it's in my room. I said, it's in the closet. I ain't put it on the wall or nothing like that. 
She said, bring it here. I said, yes, ma'am. So I go get the picture, take it to grandma. She said, what's that boy's name? So I told her the name. So grandma started doing magical spell work on the Tupac picture, right? Now, I'm not, I can't, I, I gotta tell y'all this how the shit go now. Grandma said, we gonna get his ass, because I don't like that, because he hurt my friend girl, and I just, that bitch got to pay. And so she started doing magical rituals. I, I come home, I mean, I come to her house two days later after giving her the picture. She got candles, she got flowers down there. I even seen the tail of a raccoon laid out on that bitch. I don't know where she got that from, but <laughs> she had a raccoon tail laid out in front of her with some pictures and some sage and some shit burning candles in the dark little corner of the back shed where she did all of the magic work. It was just like that, people. So I'm like, cool, grandma. I say, so grandma finna do some fuck shit. Nah. Nah, grandmama doing this fucking spiritual work. And grandma said she hoped that nigga die. She said, I want that bitch to die. And she knew that his blood was on there. But also the blood of Miss Emma grandson was on there too. Y'all keep that in mind, people. So now while the blood of Miss Emma grandson was on that bit, grandma done did this ritual, not knowing that the blood of Miss Emma grandson was on the picture. So she wishing, hoping, praying that this cat die, expire, get the fuck out of Dodge. And I get it, I get it. Grandma was pissed off and upset. So now, this is 1996, 1995, 96, you feeling me? So this round by that time, and if I'm not mistaken, that's when Tupac passed away. Now grandma had set up there and did the whole ritual to kill the dude from LA, but had hurt Miss Emma and Miss Emma grandson, but on the nose to grandmama, you know, Miss Emma grandson blood had splattered on the picture too, cause he had got shot in the arm when they first got it. So now, I'm gonna say round by the beginning of September, August, the, the end of August, beginning of September, Miss Emma grandson fell real ill. He went into the hospital and he didn't make it. I'm just gonna be G with you, he didn't make it. So then the cat from LA some start fucking up with him and he just started walking the street going crazy and he was doing a little reckless shit like jumping in front of cars slapping on cars he was being real aggressive you know going over there to the to the hole to my robbing everybody in here stealing people's shoes and shit off the porch he just went crazy lost his mind until you know one of the dope boys caught his ass and you know they put a knife in him boom put him laid his ass down right at the corner of riley street and ivy lane road left him there stinking you know, they found him on the way, when the kids was on the way to school. So not the spell that grandma did work. Now grandma is pretty fucking satisfied, but she don't know why Miss Emma's son in the hospital and why he done passed away. So suddenly she understood what the gangster nigga did. So Miss Emma all sad and grandma thinking she all, yeah, I took care of that motherfucker who shot him. Grandma thinking Miss Emma grandson passed away from the gunshot wound complications and infections. That's the type of shit. So I said, Grandma, I said, what ritual you did to take that boy out? She told me, well, when his blood got on the picture, that picture, that was a splatter. Say, we got his ass. So when, say, when, you, when your uncle and your brother and your cousin went and beat him down like that, and all that blood was on that picture that I saw that I wiped off and kept on that handkerchief, we had his motherfucking ass. That bitch gonna know. He, he's a walking menace. He should not be nowhere on the motherfucking planet hurting old women, shoot, uh, hurting up faggots and shit. And that's how grandma talk, deal with it. So I say, yeah, grandma. I say, but you know that, I say, you know, Miss Emma, you know, grandson blood hit that picture too. I say, did you separate the names when you were doing that shit? She like, what? I say, yes, ma'am. I say, so if you did a picture for the blood that was on it in your incantations, from what you taught me, Grandma, I say, you probably sent that boy to the hospital and killed him all. She said, no, baby, don't tell me that. I said, yeah, Grandma. I say, don't you tell Miss Emma that 
that you had a play in that shit now, because I say y'all both witches, and, and the last thing I need to do is go take Miss Emma out for you. And you know me and Grandma, we petty as fuck. Grandma go to laughing like, well, bitch, I sure enough won't tell her, but oh well, I'm sorry. He, he's a good boy. He went to heaven. And Grandma cold with the shit. But she say, long as she got her man, she was good. Now, people, listen to me good. Now, I'm not saying Grandma had anything to do with Tupac's passing. But think about this. If she did a ritual on a Tupac picture that had a blood sacrifice on it, incidentally, and three people passed away, and Tupac passed away September of 96, the same time a week after um, his Emma grandson passed away, and about, you know, three, four, four weeks after, uh, yeah, three or four weeks before uh, the L.A. Gangster Cat passed away. You know, so I always thought in my mind that maybe the spell Grandma did kind of triggered some of the events that led the old pop being touched, you know, at that nightclub or whatever it was, the Vegas Strip. So I always had that inkling in the back of my head. So I'm finna, I'm finna, I'm finna change it up a little bit, people, because I don't want nobody to be like, fuck nigga, your grandma killed Tupac, we hate her. No, I don't think it was like that. I just think the energy of the spell that she did resonated so hard to when all that shit went out, it just made the energy more accessible because them spirits they were using, I think it went down to Hollywood and all that shit though, and it found the real Tupac, she, because she did use the blood that was on the Tupac picture. Nah, that's how that goes. So nah, it's a little bit more to the story. So y'all, y'all bear with me here. So nah, Tupac done got off. Uh, Miss Emma grandson dead. The LA gangster cat, he done passed away. So now everything in the uproar. People see Sam paraphernalia, paraphernalia and all that stuff. Grandma trying to make up for what she did because she kind of figured she took, you know, Miss Emma grandson out. She go and get Miss Emma one of them, them Tupac shirts that everybody was selling. And Miss Emma old ass wearing a bitch and she bought her like two or three on uh, because Grandma felt really bad for it because she did a ritual in haste and didn't think. And I didn't tell her that his blood got on it or nothing. I, 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 it wasn't my mindset to do that. So, now Grandma is riding around and everywhere she going, she she go to the corner store to play a lotto, she hearing Tupac music. So grandma always thought she was being haunted by the image in the in the music of Tupac. So we could never play Tupac around grandmama. She hated Tupac. She hated Tupac. She hated the music. She hated the pictures. She hated everything about Tupac. And cause not because Tupac was a bad person. She just hated the simple fact, the energy that, that he brought to the table, right? So now, everybody come around the house and we all wearing our little bandanas on our head like Tupac. We all want to be Tupac. Motherfuckers getting through it, like printed on the chest and the stomach and shit. Everybody acting like Tupac. My sister was loving on Tupac. Even her baby daddy, he, he wearing the big clothes and shit like Tupac. So grandma was constantly being bombarded with the Tupac shit. So she said, I want to stop this shit. So now grandma didn't throw away the painting that she had did the ritual because grandma used to take all her shit to the storage and she would store all of her, uh, every spell grandma ever did, she would store it, you know, store the, the, the prompts she used to do the spells. That's some of you guys in the spell work you do. Don't just do one spell and throw the, mater the source material away. Keep the shit, you know, that makes the spell grow stronger because you can always go back and feed that energy you did it with. Most spell people, they'll do the spell and throw the bitch away. So grandma said, she going, she told me, come on, get in the car. We finna go to the store and we finna get this picture and we finna burn that bitch. And I'm like, okay, grandma, you got it. So we stopped and grandma never burnt anything with Florida water. She always used kerosene. She says, when you burn something with kerosene, it, it's a purifier. It's like takes away the, it helps rid the spirit. So that's something she always said. I never understood why. So we go over there to the storage off of Kirkman, the same one where, you know, me and Mike 
you know, I met Ralph. Me and Ralph ass was sitting up in there trying to do devil worship and shit. And he tried to take my body. I got a story about that bitch. So we go over there and grandma go in there and she get the Tupac picture. So when we walk in the thing with the Tupac picture, it's dark because she had an outside storage unit. It wasn't climate control. So she said, you go in there first. I said, okay. I ain't scared. It's just a damn storage. The bitch ain't had no but seven or eight objects in it. So I walk in there, I see the Tupac picture. It wasn't covered up or nothing. I say, Grandma, you didn't cover this thing up? She said, y'all always cover it up. I don't want it to rot. I say, well, the cover off of this bitch. I say, the tarp off of it. She say, no, it ain't. Stop lying, stop playing. I say, Grandma, stick your goddamn head in here and see it. So Grandma leaned her head around the corner and I seen the look on Grandma's face. She got such a fright and she had such a fright she said, oh my God, the picture pointed at me. I said, who? I said, that picture didn't move. And grandma said, the picture pointed at me. Keep in mind, it was the a big life-size picture of him pleading the fifth. And she said his hand went behind his back. Say the left hand was pointing at her with the right hand up in the air. And that's a Masonic symbol, by the way. Uh, that's I think that's like the second move in Masonry. Something like that, I can't go into it. But uh yeah. So he did the the whole second the second move in masonry. She 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 demonstrated and she said that's what it was. Now the second move in masonry talks about the human heart, you know, you gotta have purity of heart. And she said the picture did that when she looked at it, but I'm looking at the same picture and it didn't do that. It was just standing. So this is something only she can see, so that let you know the guilt was eating her conscious up. So I say, well, you want me to put the tarp on it? She say, cover that shit up, cover it up, cover it up. So I grabbed the tarp off the ground, threw it over there, took the little string and rope, and I tied it back on there. I say, so we got to put it in your car. She say, uh-uh, tie it to the top of the car. So as we tie the shit to the top of the car, and we driving around, we finna go into the backyard of her house and burn the bitch, right? Her radio station turned over to uh, 102 Jams. Only thing they playing, only thing they playing is a tribute to Tupac. <laughs> and it's the radio won't go down, it won't turn off, it won't shut up. It's just a tribute to Tupac. Tupac greatest hit. So we driving up Ivy Lane Road, going over there to a spot to burn the picture, and we have to listen to Tupac all the way to home till we get to her spot. I can't make this shit up, people. So she like, I hate this motherfucking nigga. She just bitching the whole time. I hate that motherfucker. I hate that motherfucker. Get with Ian Grandma up like a motherfucker. So we got there. She'd go to turn off the car. The car wouldn't turn off. The music started getting louder. So she said, get that fuck nigga off my car. Get that stupid shit off my car. So, you know, I jump out and I untie the rope from the inside, take the picture, run it to the backyard, See the kerosene, start dousing kerosene on it, start dousing kerosene on it. She say, soak that bitch, soak it. And she like, she couldn't stand the music. The music was getting too loud on her head, but to me, the decibel was the same. It was the same fucking tune we always ride to. So she came back there and she struck that match and she threw that fucking thing on that, on that Tupac picture. Man, when... The fight when the flame hit the gasoline on that Tupac picture, man, the bitch turned like a like a neon green fire, like a neon green. Then it turned like a blue. Then it turned like a white. Then it it go, it go with orange and black and smoke. And the picture was just leaning against the tree, like that I leaned it on. And the tree was already dead. We had buried so much fuck shit under that tree. That tree was never gonna grow no leaves. It, that was our burying tree. All the spells me and grandma did. So the, the picture was leaning up against it, and that picture was just burning. The tree didn't burn, it just was the picture burning. And as the picture burning, I'm seeing, you know, like how the paint and shit, or how the, the, the canvas start deforming. And at that time, I could see the picture of Tupac pointing at grandma. And grandma, that's when I saw it too. I'm like, grandma, that motherfucker pointing at you. She said, I told you, dumbass, he was pouring that bitch evil. That, I hate that motherfucker. And right then and there, people, I understood what grandma meant. 
So the picture went ahead and burnt on up, and we, you know, we just kept setting it on fire all night long, adding wood to it. We burnt down the little metal frame. We was just kept on burning that bitch. It took us like six hours to like 12 o'clock at night. But we burnt that bitch, and we dug a hole, and we buried the ashes in that motherfucker, and, you know, broke out the loo and them shit, and we buried that under that tree, too. We packed that motherfucker. So now let me tell you some people. That's the end of the story. That was, to me, that was pretty fast and quick, but I couldn't go heavy in the detail with all the bullshit that happened with it because it was crimes committed, and I ain't trying to implicate nobody. I don't know if it's a statute of limitation for robbery. I don't know if that shit still the thing, so I'm not trying to implement anybody. But people I saw with my own self-eyes that... The spell grandma did on that L.A. cat that caused him to lose his life. The spell grandma did that caused my Emma grandson to lose his life. You know, and then Tupac passing away within the same time frame as she did that. I think the soul of that rapper pointed at grandma. And I don't know, was it blaming her or was it a demon fucking with her? But to this day, grandma, well, to this day before grandma passed, she did not like Tupac music. She don't like nothing about it. And I'll let you guys decide what's going on with that one now. All right, everybody, I'm finna close this bitch out. I'm Tyke, telling you guys sometimes the truth is stranger than fiction, but it's the truth, no doubt. Y'all stay safe out there. Be good.